Grade 12 Physics, Fields Note Number 3, Electric Field Energy. Here we're going to look at electric field energy, which is a grand equation of um, electric potential energy. We're going to compare it to gravitational potential energy, something that we saw in the last note from the previous unit, where gravitational potential energy is equal to negative g mm over r. If we actually look at electrostatic potential energy, the grand equation is very similar to that, k q1 q2 divided by r. If we check the units on this equation, left side will be in joules, the right side will be, um, when we put in those units, it'll simplify to joules as well. <coughs> so they're very similar to the force equations, except these ones are just divided by r. So let's not make a mistake in terms of confusing force with an energy. Coulomb's law, which is kqq over r squared, is a force. Electrostatic potential energy, which is kqq over r, is an energy. A force is not an energy and vice versa. Don't get those mixed up whenever you're trying to solve a question. So if we look at gravitational potential energy, when we lift a box above the ground, we know we give it gravitational potential energy. The higher we lift it, the more gravitational potential energy it gets. Same with electrics. If we have a positively charged object and we lift an electron above it, the more separation, the more electric potential energy. But the difference here is that instead of an electron, let's say we lift a proton above a positively charged object, we're actually going to get the opposite effect. This is something we'll look at a little bit later in the unit. So here, looking at this new equation, kqq over r, we can have energy that's positive or negative. We have to remember that if the two charges are the same, we're going to get a positive answer, which means we're dealing with repulsion. If the two charges have opposite signs, we know that they're going to be attracted to each other, we're going to get a negative answer. So here negative means attraction. Let's do one example. Let's say there's two protons that are held together, but they're are held near each other, they're at rest. They're separated by 10 nanometers. We know because our protons are going to feel a repulsion. When one proton is released and the other one remains fixed, how fast will it be traveling after the separation between them is 10 centimeters? So we're going to draw a picture of this. Basically, we're just holding two protons close to each other. We let go of one, and we're going to calculate it, the speed it's going after the distance between them gets to 10 centimeters. So here's the before, where the two protons have 10 nanometer separation. Afterwards, that second proton has moved, and now it's 10 centimeter separation. So there's the velocity. There's a constant force on it, means it's going to accelerate, so that velocity will grow and grow and grow. Beforehand, the only energy we're dealing with is electrostatic energy, so kqq over r. Afterwards, it's moving, so there is a separation, it's going to be bigger, we still have electrostatic energy, but now it's also going to have kinetic energy. So let's do conservation of energy here, energy before equals energy finally. When we put in our numbers, kqq over r for the beforehand. Now we do need to put 10 nanometers at the bottom. There's a typo there. It should be 10 times 10 to the negative 9. On the right-hand side of the equation, we have two charges that are the same, so we can just square those charges, divided by 0 0.1, right? That's 10 centimeters. Here we'll solve for velocity. It ends up being 5.25 times 10 to the 3 meters per second. 